Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Friday, August 5th, 2022. And tonight, I'll be covering paranormal news. Oops, I think I might have the volume down a little too much. Uh, but, um, okay, there we go. Um, so, thank you all for being here, as always. I see you all there in the stream. Um, for all episodes of the podcast, you can find those along with links to social media and ways to donate and ways to contact me at the podcast page, which is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions. Or if you have stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust, happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Tonight I'll be covering paranormal news, and there will also be an extra paranormal news show tomorrow night as well. Um, I have a buildup of uh, alerts in my inbox and uh, to go through and. So I'm sure there's plenty there to make another show out of it. And uh, that way we can get somewhat caught up on to more current uh, events. So, and there'll be just fun to do something extra on Saturday here. Uh, no other plans. So I thought might as well. Happy to um, do shows whenever I can really. So, and, um, and then Sunday will be True Paranormal Stories from the Web. And then Wednesday will be some kind of a review, um, whether it's no of novels or comics or we will see as it gets closer. <clears throat> and uh, go from there. So uh, I've already put all the articles I'm going to mention in the Discord stream chat. And I will include those links also in the episode descriptions. For on the podcast and YouTube feeds. <clears throat> so I think that covers everything. Um, thank you all for listening. Again, whether you're here for the live streams or you listen on the podcast or the YouTube streams as well. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. So I can get started on the articles here. These are all in the the more ghostly or uh, strange paranormal category here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, not too many other ones. So I decided to just take all these kind of stories and go with these today. And um, so... We'll begin with this first one here, which is from WOBM.com. And this article is, the title is, uh, Would You Dare Drive Down New Jersey's Most Haunted Road? And this is from Diana Tyler. It's from the middle of last month. And, um... This is about a road some of you may have heard about if you look into these kind of places. And that is uh, a road called uh, Clinton Road. And so this is, um, apparently there, not only is this road said to be haunted, the places that are along it, which is really, I find interesting about this, uh, the, there are places along this road that are also said to be haunted. And it makes me wonder now, too, if you look at um, areas that have multiple places that are said to be haunted, how how many of these places will line up on, along roads? I wonder, again, are some roads, how many roads really are made along some kind of energy lines or ley lines that um, can lead to more of this kind of these things happening or developing. So, um, this article is talking about this road and places along it. 
and some of these are um these places are one is called the devil's tree another is gravity hill now that one is something that you can find in a few different places around the country i've heard of a few of those different those different um places those di that different kind of excuse me if i can talk that kind of phenomenon of of apparently going um th this kind of optical illusion is what i've heard it usually is but where it appears as though your vehicle is being pushed up a road by or a hill by invisible hands when it's more of an optical illusion um so but also and then apparently these are along this road but the road itself is supposedly haunted and um so this article talks about these places uh and um including this road that's allegedly haunted by the ghost of a boy who likes to um play with visitors uh and one example that they give in this article is if you throw coins in the river he'll give them back to you um i've heard of this before where they'll they'll either they'll basically appear again near you so um there's also a a site of a uh building known as cross castle which burned down years ago um and there are apparently people said that groups of people that are said to be seen near there that give off weird their their ominous feelings um there's of course this is just legends i don't know for sure and um so that's where the article ends it's not really doesn't go into a ton of detail about this but uh, but still, it's a road I've heard of before, so I thought I'd share it, and uh, you all can check it out further. So some of these articles, there um, there isn't a ton in them, so I may just skim over and maybe just more of a mention than uh, anything else. But um, so this next article is from thetravel.com, and the title of this one is. The Haunted History of the 1886 Crescent Hotel in Eureka, Eureka Springs. And um, I've heard of this place before as well. This is um, the, uh, the author of this article. I'm not sure how to say that. So I will let you all look into that. Um, Luana? Luana? Prairie, I'm not Prairie, I'm not sure. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name. Um, but uh, so let's see here. So this is um apparently in I always forget what state this is, but apparently this is in Arkansas, and um and including this hotel and then um other places that are said to be haunted, but especially this hotel. Um, this was supposed to be a secluded place where people could, um, enjoy the springs back in 1886 that were said to have healing properties at the time. Um, but eventually due to financial, uh, financial problems, it says they had to close, close down. And, uh. And that's when the reports of it being haunted uh, started. So um, apparently it is still open now. It's open again now at this point for reservations um, to have to look into this uh, location. And um, it goes, the article goes into more detail about the history of the place and uh which let me see here mentions uh tragedies different tragedies when um including one when the place was even just being constructed there was a construction worker that died in a fatal accident there um apparently he fell 
And um, so let's see here. Looking at what else, what else there is. Um, so yeah, there's it's, but I have heard of this location. So this is not just a one-off. I've heard of this place being haunted as well. So, um, apparently there was other, um, other. It was used for other purposes over the years, including a um. A kind of a school, I guess. A woman's or girls' college, woman's college. And, um, but over the years, every one of those businesses in time ended up failing. <clears throat> um, so let's see here. So, yes, um, there's that's basically it for this article here. Uh, there's a little more, and I'll let y'all look into it more and go from there. So, let's see here. So, this next article is from liverpoolecho.co.uk. And this one is, the title is, Ghost Hunters Forced to Abandon Investigation After Chilling Discovery. I'm looking for a, an, an author. I'm not seeing one. Um, but apparently, this is about a pair of investigators that um, were scared away from a site, which was an old railway, br railway bridge, uh, by footsteps and voices. I'm guessing it must have been a fair amount of them if, if they were actually, if they ended up leaving the place. Um, so, just looking here in the de de into the details a little more. And um, apparently you can feel, um, when you're by this bridge, you can feel someone walking next to you. And you never quite felt like you were alone. Um, so let's see here. So yeah, there's a little bit more in this article about that, but, um, I just find it, uh, ironic in a way that sometimes, apparently now that this is, um, these two investigators have a YouTube channel and there's a video of this, this investigation on the channel, I'm guessing here, based on what it's saying. But, um, it always... I'm not saying that I'm judging, but I'm just saying it's always amazing to me that people that do these things, that go in these investigations on a regular basis can end up having to leave a place because of, I guess, feelings they get from there. I don't know. It just really makes you wonder if, if that's what it is, if there's... That doesn't really say that the place felt bad from what I'm reading here. Um. But, um, so I don't know. Just, um, that caught my attention there. That, um, there was enough activity, I guess, to where the investigators wanted to leave. And so they did. So, uh, let's see here. Um, looking at everything. So, um, yeah, so that's that article. And, uh, again, I'm, like I said, I might be going through these a little bit fast today just because there's so many of them, but, uh, I'm doing what I can here. I'm still getting used to doing this whole news thing, so. But, um, all the links will be in the, the episode description, as I said, so you can, you can look into these things more, more carefully. Now, these next two articles are connected, and, um, I, I find this also fascinating in a way. Um, so this first one here, it, it's it's from express.co.uk. And let's see here. Oh, there we go. Um, the title says, James May speaks out as viewers spot 
Ghost in his Italy travel series. And, um, so apparently someone spotted a, something in, in the video of the show that they're talking about here that they that seemed like it was a spirit or a ghost to them. And um, so at first I wasn't going to really share this. And, um, but then I found the next article and I'm really, I'll let the, um, I'll let you all check out the articles. There's not a ton of details in there as far as what they are. I think there's there's images in them that you can look at and see what the people are talking about. But this next article here is about the same show. And this one is uh, from ladbible.com. But this one, the title is um, A Viewer Has Spotted Another ghost in background of James May documentary and this one here it says it's from Emily Emily Brown is the author of this one so either people are not seeing things right or there's there's artifacts I believe in one of the articles it mentions that they could just be problems technical problems but either this is just one heck of a coincidence or people are seeing or sensing things in the recordings of this show which um that in itself to me it was surprising that this um that this is something that has happened multiple times and it's but it's for a travel show it's not even necessarily for or a paranormal show so um i don't know what to make of that i think it'd be amazing if that was true uh, um, but uh, but yeah, still, still, still need to have found those two articles and um, about the same show and but citing two different things, two different pieces of footage apparently. So, so that's why I wanted to share those two articles and uh, today. So, just something that uh. Surprise me. Oops, let me see here. I just minimized everything. There we go. All right. So, let's see here. This next one is also another um another thing spotted on on footage, but not um not for a TV show. Um this is from ndtv.com. And I've seen this now. This is just the first article I found about this, but in my um the the automatic alerts I get, this came up several times. <clears throat> and the title of this one is Mysterious Pale Figure Caught on CCTV Sparks Debate Among Paranormal Enthusiasts. And it says this 33 second video shows a pale human like figure. It appears lanky and hunched over in the back garden of a home. Um, so, and this one says it's edited by, I'm not sure how to say that name, but um, I apologize for that. But, um, and it has the video in here, and it does appear to be some kind of figure. Um, and, I don't know what else to make of it, but it says in this article here, this was taken in a home near a home in the U S I believe near Kentucky. Um, and this was caught on a CCTV installed in the area and posted by or posted on Twitter by paranormal paranormality magazine. That is a, a fairly, um, I've heard of that name on there on Twitter before. I believe that's a fairly well-known online magazine. Uh, this is this video was taken near Moorhead in Kentucky, as I said, Kentucky. And um, it says the uh, the footage uh, shows 
or the image resembles the human-like figures that caused a lot of destruction in the movie that was um the title of the movie was spectral i haven't seen the movie but apparently there's some resemblances between this figure that's seen in this video and the creature in that movie and um it's a, it appears to be carefully moving ahead around and looking around while getting closer to the homeowner's car. I'm trying to figure out if I've already covered this one or not. I don't think I have. If, if it's not, I'm hoping it's not the same one. I don't think it is based on looking at it, but um, still, these sightings are really always just, I love to look into these. So, um, but yeah, there's a little more of this article article here that I'll let you all read into more and look at the video yourselves. So, um, that's that article. Now, these next two are from uh, only in uh, only in your state dot com, and um, <clears throat> these are about haunted places and. Uh, I believe this site does other things, but these are about these two are about, about haunted places. And this is um, this article is by Christy Ar Aracola. Aracola, not sure. Um, and the title is "The Oldest Hotel in New York is Also One of the Most Haunted Places You'll Ever Sleep." And this is apparently the the Be Beekman Arms Inn. And um, I hadn't heard of this one. And it's apparently in Rhinebeck. Apparently it's been in business since 1766. Um, which, and it was, but it was added on to a tavern that was already there since 1704. So, three centuries old, this property it says that many people have stayed at this hotel. And, um, and so it says that, uh, obviously visiting the place, it, it's set up like a colonial inn. So it looks, seems like you're going back in time. It looks a lot like it did, um, apparently when it first was established. And this article has pictures. Um, mentions that many famous people have stayed there over the years, including uh, George Washington, Alexander, Alexander, Alexander Hamilton, uh, Benedict Arnold, and others. So, um, and apparently, again, the um there are apparitions there that are seen or heard at least uh felt there and so much so that paranormal investigators have uh been there and have found uh evidence uh, apparently fair amount of that uh it says that the the part of the place that is the most haunted um is the tavern and it says it makes sense since it was the oldest part of the the inn. Um, so let's see here. I'm just looking through, trying to get to the. So it says um, people will, people will hear whispering and other strange sounds there. And uh, so apparently that's the main claim. Um, and, but you can still stay there, uh, according to this article. So, um, not many claims there, but I'm guessing there must be more if you dig into that more. Um, so, but 300 years old, that's, that's 300 plus now. So that really is amazing. This next one is, uh, also from only in your state. 
And the title of this one is One of the Most Haunted Cemeteries in Georgia is Also the Most Beautiful. And this is from uh, Lisa Simmons. Simmons. Not sure. Sorry about that. And um, now this is something that comes up a lot. A lot of cemeteries are said to be haunted. Not always in a bad way, although there's plenty of sites that we'll talk about that they kind of, there's some, this idea that a lot of, that all these places have to, if they're haunted, they have to be, it has to be scary. But um, not always. That's, I'm sure that's not always the case. Um, and this is, the this is, um, the name of this is Colonial Park Cemetery. It says it's right in the heart of Savannah, uh, downtown Savannah, Georgia. And uh, apparently, okay. So it's a city park, but it's 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 a cemetery as well. And it's six acres. And um, it was established in 1750. And um, let's see here. Apparently, after around 9,000 people were buried there, it was closed to more bur further burials in 1853. So, it is a cemetery, but it's not an, um, currently active, I guess you could say. Um, mentions that many famous people are buried there, including war heroes from the American Revolution. Um, members of Georgia's Provincial Congress and um, among others including um, one of the three Georgia-born si uh, signers of the Declaration of Independence. So um, apparently, let me see here. It was also used as a temporary base during the Civil War in the U.S. Um, for Union Union troops. Uh, let's see here, and um, so it was a it was a temporary base for hundreds of soldiers there. So let's see. I'm trying to get to the hauntings of it. Uh, Let's see here. So there are um, rumors about the place, and um, including claims of strange noises coming from within the cemetery walls, uh, and then sightings of orbs and mists um, are said to float over the area as well. So, and of course, it does say that it is. Um, beautiful and I'm looking at the pictures here and it does look amazing so <clears throat> if you're ever in the area I guess you could check it out um, if it's open to the public I don't see anything in there that says when it is or isn't open so definitely always check on that before you go um, as always never never a good idea to trespass just uh, just always like to put that out there for various reasons So, I see here, I'm looking to see how many I have left. Oh, okay, we're doing okay. We have three more articles left here. <clears throat> and, uh, and then I'll be done. So, this next one is from verylocal.com. And let's see here. Let me get rid of this pop-up here. Okay, there's that gone. Um, and this one says Haunted Nola, which is New Orleans, Louisiana. The ghostly hands of children at the galley house. Now this is um somewhat it's it's a sad article in a way because um it's talking about this uh plague from the past 
that um, took many lives um, back. Let's see here. Um, look, trying to figure out here and find where it says when this happened. This was in <clears throat> 1853. And um, this, uh, let's see here. Trying to find the um, yellow. Okay, yellow fever is what what the, what happened here, and uh, in 1853. And so, as the title of the article sa says, apparently people have reported um, feeling hands. Um, let's see here. And uh, some people claim that they've been, they've actually, while they're, they're on tours of this area, they claim that they've been, um, they've been touched by or even grasped by the uh, hands of children who had uh, passed away in this area. So, um, again, it's hard to say for sure what's going on there, but um, let's see here. It's a, again a sad, sad um, article here in a way, but um, apparently this is uh, there are a lot of um, let's see here. There's there's a lot of reports in in New Orleans in general of the whole area being haunted. Um, and uh people say in um at, in this house they've heard the crying of young young um young younger people i guess children um and they hopefully the, in this article mentions it hopefully it's just an echo or maybe a residual haunting based on what happened <clears throat> um way back when so but um that is the one thing about these these kinds of tragedies is makes you wonder what is left behind by them. So um, let me see here. Looking at more this article, the, the print in this article is not so friendly, I have to say. So um, I will let you all look into the rest of that and uh to learn more so let's see here go on to the next article here this is from this is from the drinksbusiness.com and um and this is another one that i've seen several articles about but i found um it was neat to find this on a website that is apparently a little more of like a business site and this title of this article is Ghost Captured on Camera at 300-Year-Old Pub. And that's by Eloise Felden. Felden. So this, um, this place in question here is um, the Swan Inn in Dunstable, Dunstable? Dunstable? Bedfordshire. Shire. And um, so this is the UK. Apparently, this is something caught on security a security camera footage, where a bottle of beer was caught on camera, flying off a shelf behind the bar onto the floor with no one nearby. And um, let's see here. Apparently, the rest of the bottles on the shelf didn't move. The manager there um, told this uh, web or told the the media that the bar staff were um, spooked after, and uh, apparently, this isn't the first time that they've caught things on camera. There mentions there was one other time, so. Um, let's see here. So the, the, uh, and when this happened at first, the pub manager 
blamed a group of um, people that were there for making a mess, but the the people there were swore they had not been the ones to do this. And um, and then of course the footage was found, and it showed that as far as you could tell, apparently, um, they were not lying about that. So, just a neat little story. And uh, thought I'd share that. Now, let's see here. So, this last one is the premise of this last one. I really kind of question in a way. I don't know how I feel about this one. And I'm going to let you all uh, check it out and make your own decisions on it. I, I don't know. But this one is. Um, it's from the Saxon.org. And this one says Zodiac signs that attract supernatural and paranormal things. Are you among them? And um, this one, especially, I'm not going to really get into the details of it because um, I only see one, like, one thing here. Um, oh, there's a couple of different signs, but just the idea to me, it seems like almost everyone, I bet you, I, the, the thing that came to mind when I saw this article was, I bet you, if you were to pull a group of people that have had experiences, I have a feeling they would all have, they would all fall into different, different signs of that, of that system. I, just from what I can think of offhand, it seems like. I know plenty of people whose birthdays are in different parts of the year that have had weird experiences. So, um, not I don't know what they're basing their research on. I'm, I'm not saying that they're necessarily wrong because I don't know for sure. But I found this idea, even just in itself, to be um, something to think about. But I don't know. I have a hard time with it. But Maybe it's just more a more or less thing. Maybe there are some signs that have more things happen, but I don't know. Like I said, it's I just thought I'd share that and see what you all think. And you all can always message me in Discord or um, through email, salcedoparanormal at gmail dot com, and uh, we can go from there. So, yeah, it could be that we're all just from Mars. Who knows? But, um, but yeah, so just wanted to share that one. And um, again, that'll be in the episode description. So you all can check those out, that out, along with all the other articles, uh, whenever you'd like to. So, and that's going to do it for today. Um, thank you all for being here and listening. I uh, hope, hope that was a, hope you all enjoyed that. And uh, again, like I said, tomorrow night, I'm going to do an extra show because I get these, I have these automatic alerts set up and uh, I, um, I only went through 50 or so of them today. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow night extra show. Yep. And I still have another hundred al alerts to read through to, to find more content for, or more articles from. So I figure might as well try to get close to caught up. So um yeah, so I'm gonna do an extra extra uh, excuse me. I'm gonna do a, another show tomorrow night. So um I was I said in the, the Discord earlier, I think I'm just going to call it um paranormal news extra. Um and this will this may happen from time to time, once in a while, depending on uh, again how many um how much I have to look through. And uh, if there's a lot, then yeah, I don't mind doing an extra show when I can here and there. So honestly, I'd, I'd love to just, I would love to still be doing the show five nights a week. If I could, I would. But uh, so at least once in a while, we can do a, a fourth show a week here and there. So um, that'll be it though, until tomorrow night. And uh, we'll go from there. So thank you all for listening. 
And I will talk to you all tomorrow night on a special episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care, everyone.